Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambeau channel. Roslyn Layton has written an article for Forbes on the SEC vs. Ripple case titled All the SEC's Emails, and it highlights, among other things, the, quote, brazen conduct, end quote, of the SEC, and the degree to which it's incredibly important that justice be done here, and I'm still optimistic for, for what's going on here. But uh, um, Rosalind Layton, she writes an article on this topic, uh, well, the topic of the SEC vs. Ripple case, uh, it seems to me like once uh, every month or two, and I've covered all of her work, and it's absolutely fantastic. Uh, in fact, here's something that attorney John Deaton said upon reading this himself. He said, the sign of a great journalist is that every time you read her new article, you think it's the best one yet. Uh, here's what attorney Hogan had to say. He wrote, Dr. Layton once again knocking it out of the park on recent developments in the Ripple case. And uh, by the way, there's a reference to the Sword of Damocles and uh, in the article, and Jeremy Hogan addresses that here since it's not commonly known. I actually, I've covered it in previous videos because I never seem to be able to retain exactly what it is. I've researched it, and then it comes up again at some point X number of months later. All right, right, it's sort of down, please. What the hell is it? Then I have to Google it again. I wish I could just retain all the information the first time I learned it. But regrettably, that is not how human work, humans work. So anyway, here's what uh, Jeremy said. By the way, the Sword of Damocles is a reference to a feeling of impending doom. It comes from Cicero and was used, was used by President Kennedy when discussing the nuclear Cold War. But uh, before going further, I do want to be clear. I do not have a legal or financial background of any kind. I'm not offering legal or financial advice. And you definitely should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. I'm just an enthusiast who enjoys making YouTube videos about crypto-related topics, but just as a hobby and just for fun. In we go. The Securities and Exchange Commission has lorded the sword of Damocles over fintech for years. It has used the blunt force of regulation by enforcement to make de facto rules against innovative companies rather than following the notice and comment steps required by the 1948 Administrative Procedure Act. Its lawsuits against Kick Interactive, Telegram, and, most famously, Ripple, shows the sledgehammer wielded for quick settlements that avoid judicial tests. But dozens of emails, if compelled by the court, could bring the agency's reckoning. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, folks, this is positive. This is, ex she's right. This is exactly why we're never going to see those damn emails. This is why, despite the fact that it, it, it irritates me to no end, that the soonest this case will settle is March of next year, if it's fully adjudicated, well, well I guess, admittedly, grinds my gears. I don't think that's most likely to happen. I think what's most likely is that you're going to see the SEC appeal Judge Netburn's decisions on the Hinman emails having to do with his Ethereum free pass speech. Judge Judge ne uh, Judge Torres is then going to side with Judge Netburn, who ordered twice, at least twice, that the SEC must provide these emails. And and what's the timeline like that going to look like? Well, I, I saw um, the other day Attorney Deaton cite that he anticipates that if there's an appeal and it's relatively soon, that he would he his guess is that Judge Torres would answer that appeal by the end of June. So yeah, it could be a situation where if there's an appeal, and there probably will be, it's going to take a couple months. Um, and then after that, though, once that appeal comes down, that's when he says the timer starts. And I'm sure many of you have heard this at this point, but in case not, I'll mention again. He says that should the SEC lose on that appeal, and they're ordered again, and by Judge Torres this time, they must hand over those emails. It starts a 90-day timer from that very moment, and, and Attorney Deaton does anticipate still that there will be settlement between the SEC and Ripple once that timer starts within 90 days. Because whatever's in there, they're fighting so hard to prevent us from seeing them, it has to be truly damning and exculpatory for Ripple. So I'm going to get that far. That's, that's the anticipation anyway. The piece continues. The SEC took it too far with Ripple, accusing the enterprise blockchain company of failing to register the digital asset XRP as a security since 2013 even though it duly operates as a bona fide bridge currency. Exchanges immediately dropped trading of the Ripple currency XRP, and investors lost billions of dollars in value. The SEC's flippant decision stoked a class action firestorm from the ferocious, decentralized XRP community. Folks, she's talking about you. You listening to this. And it's true. Like, I, I tell you what, the SEC did not know what the hell they were doing when they poked this bear. They never would have guessed that there is a community this big, big and and this indeed ferocious, as she stated here, uh, as the XRP community, and we're having none of it. 
this is the, the fact that we've all spoken out the way that we have everybody in the community. And now the fact that there's over 66,000 of us being represented by attorney Deaton, uh, that that is incredibly powerful and absolutely helps the SEC versus Ripple case. Judge Torres sees that. There's a reason Attorney Deaton's allowed to participate in this court case. It's big stuff. You know, peace continues. To justify its actions in court, the SEC has leaned heavily on the so-called Howey test that an asset is a security if its value is derived by the actions of a third party. Fintech policy scholars debate whether the Supreme Court case about shares in Florida orange groves in the 1940s is applicable to blockchains and cryptocurrency. Ripple has attacked the SEC's thin reasoning and challenged the due process of retroactive illegality in a climate of regulatory confusion that the agency itself created. Central to Ripple's defense is a 2018 speech delivered by then-SEC Director of Corporation Finance William Hinman, in which he declared that Ether, the native currency to Ethereum, issued in a high-profile initial coin offering, or ICO for short, in 2014, was no longer a security because it became, quote, sufficiently decentralized, end quote, over time. Despite boilerplate disclaimers that the speech was his personal opinion and not necessarily that of the commission, the market interpreted the speech as a regular as regulatory guidance. Let me just pause to note, um, even though it's true, and I, I got this, I think it was from Attorney Deaton, I, I think he's the one that made this point, I could be mistaken, maybe it, it was Attorney Hogan, but I, I think it was Attorney Deaton, he said, uh, look, the, so even though it's been determined by the court to this point, that Billy Boy Hinman's remarks that the Ethereum free pass speech were just his. Even so, given that it did impact the market and was taken as regulatory guidance, that's actually a factor. Like that, that means that it effectively was guidance. Doesn't mean that Hinman effectively is lying because he says it's not market guidance, just his opinion. But he's saying it's, again, if it was a Deaton, attorney Deaton, I think it was, he's saying that it still is market guidance and the court can interpret it that way. Which is so that's just another thing right there when it comes down to Ripple's defense, including Fair Note's defense. Uh, th things looking good, my friends. Anyway, peace continues. Even Hinman and then SEC Chair Jay Clayton said publicly that the speech reflected the SEC view. Ripple, the exchange Coinbase, and others sought clear guidance from the SEC to no avail. The best conclusion was that SEC, the SEC gave Ether a free pass and that the same logic, if applied to XRP, would make it a currency. Ripple never had an ICO, and its network was fully built and decentralized before a single token sale took place. Uh, wisely, Ripple demanded that the SEC provide some 70 emails circulated within the agency about the infamous speech. The SEC has fought a long, desperate battle to keep the emails confidential as part of its obfuscation of discovery, and even issued an 11th hour expert report on the last day of discovery. For this, the court slapped down the SEC, ordering it to pay defendants' expenses and the cost of redeposing an expert witness. The court stated, quote, The SEC has conducted itself improperly by serving an unauthorized supplemental report on the last day of discovery, end quote. And by the way, I'll pause and note this. Although I'm fan, a fan of Judge Netburn here, uh, this is one of the most regrettable decisions in terms of following through based on logic that I've, I've, I've come across because again, it just, she's saying you did something that you weren't allowed to do, but you're going to get what you want anyway. The logic doesn't follow from my perspective. I'm not going to go further in this video. I've broken down my reasoning for that, but uh, it does steam my vegetables just a little bit. Anyway, peace continues for that quote. The sec is ordered to pay defendants reasonable expenses in filing their motion to strike and redeposing Dr. Metz, the party's prior agreement that each side shall cover the costs of their own expert's time shall control. Accordingly, the SEC shall also cover the costs of Dr. Metz's time, end quote. Now, in parallel, the XRP Army has organized into a putative class over 60,000 retail XRP holders led by friend of the court John E. Deaton. They've crowdsourced an investigation of evidence that Hinman, while at the SEC, earned $15 million in retirement benefits from Simpson Thatcher, a law firm linked to Ethereum. This conflict of interest has also won the attention of Empower Oversight, a nonprofit legal watchdog which filed a raft of FOIA requests. Such conflicts forced Clayton's predecessor, Mary Jo White, to recuse herself from more than four dozen enforcement actions. 
adding yet another lawsuit against the agency. The watchdog's FOIA requests have hit pay dirt, despite SEC claims that no relevant emails existed. These incriminating emails show the SEC's lengthy process to explain away the unseemly payments to Hinman, including a memo by SEC Ethics Council and repeated warnings on criminal financial conduct. Such brazen conduct is business as usual at the SEC. Outraged investors and consumers now seek justice in court, providing the reckoning that Congress should have imposed. This blase acceptance to agency overreach could punish lawmakers in November. It does make you wonder. I don't know for sure if we're going to get that, that kind of response from the general public. You know, like we care in the XRP community, but in terms of impacting Congress to that degree at this point, I, I don't know. I mean, would it instantly, if things go bad for Ripple? Uh, no, I mean, once you see the fallout for the entire crypto asset class, yeah, I think there's going to be serious trouble, but we're nowhere near that. And I still don't think that's necessarily going to happen. So we shall see. But anyway, a very well written, fantastic piece, bringing up uh, incredible points. And I just love to see the fence of XRP holders in a, a major, from a major outlet like Forbes. I'll go ahead and wrap up here, though. I'm not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the Moon Lambo.